Hello, God bless. It's me, Dick Jr. again. Um, I'm coming to you today. I'm just going to do a brief reading. Uh, well, not a brief reading, but a reading that I had prepared uh, for uh, a service that, just in case. But uh, anyways, uh, we're, I'm going to be in Acts chapter 8. And actually, I'm only really going to, in Acts chapter 8, going to talk about verses 4, 5, 6, I think... Four, five, and six, um, and so let's. I've already prayed. I usually pray. I always pray. And usually, it's not the word. Always, I always pray before I put myself in the word, and I always pray before I come to you and I ask God to help me speak to you so that uh, I can get whatever it is that He needs me to say to you. And uh, so I suggest you do the same anytime you put yourself in the word. If you want to understand it, um, just ask Him to help you, and and He will. Okay, that's the promise. That's His promise, not my promise. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start here in Acts chapter 8, verse 4. Therefore, those who had scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and began proclaiming Christ to them. The crowds with one accord were given att giving attention to what was said by Philip as they heard and saw the signs which he was performing. Okay, so... Philip is, uh, I believe, a young man or uh, middle-aged at least, but it was, a, it was a man that was elected uh, to serve food to the widows and orphans uh, in the church in Jerusalem um, after the death of Jesus and before, well, just after the death of Jesus for a time. Um, and they started to persecute the Jews uh, in Jerusalem who were converting to Christianity and actually killed one young man here by stoning uh, and uh, since this was going on they began to run scatter for their lives and that's why it says therefore those who had been scattered went about preaching the word okay but so I'm going to go ahead and take us back because it says, therefore, those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. All right. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take us to. Uh, Acts chapter one. Uh, verses one through nine. Usually I read these out ahead of you guys uh, ahead of time to you guys for whatever reason. I kind of spaced that out, but we're going to go with it. Um. So Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. So this is the beginning of the book of Acts. This is the only chapter, or the only part in Acts that contain the words of Jesus. This is just before he ascended. Um, and that's exactly what I'm going to read, some of what he said just before he ascended into heaven. And uh, then I'm going to go back to where we were, and we'll talk about that. So uh, chapter 1, verse 1 uh, of Acts. The first account I composed... Theopolis, about all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day that he was taken up to heaven, after he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering, by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of forty days, and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father uh, had promised, which he said, you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And that's the promise. God promises that he will baptize us with the Holy Spirit. And that's all of us, not just here. All of us to this day. So when they have come together... So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? Because the Messiah is supposed to bring about, you know, the, the, the restoration of Israel and the temple and, and chase all the foreigners away and, you know, all these types of things. This is what they had built it up to be, uh, the Jewish people. What he was, was the savior of Israel our souls, not the savior of our temple or the savior of our city. 
he was the savior of our souls. See, they just had misconstrued it, which happens. Um, so, verse 7, he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the epics which the Father has fixed by his own authority. And if you want to know about some of that, I can say that Matthew chapter 24 contains a lot of Jesus' words concerning the last days. Um, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all, in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. And that means everywhere. You know, they didn't even know. Okay. But what I want to call attention to is he tells them here that they will be witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, which they weren't supposed to go there before this, and even to the remotest part of the earth. So then the apostles stayed and they received the Spirit. But the thing is, they continued to stay. So when they started to kill these Christians and they scattered, Philip ran to a city in Samaria and began proclaiming Christ to them, which is what I read in uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 5. But for him to go to Samaria is exactly what Jesus said they would do uh, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So I just wanted to kind of say, you know, it wasn't just Jesus told them they were going to do this. Okay. It came about because they started killing Christians and they ran. But see what I mean? He still said that, but he also says in, in Matthew chapter 24 that they're going to bring you before the courts and stone you. And you see what I mean? So all these things that Jesus had told them were coming, were going to come true had begun to come true. So we'll go back to Acts chapter 8. And now, uh, now I'm going to take you to Acts chapter 6. I think. Chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. And this is concerning uh, Philip, who Philip was. Okay, a little more about Philip. I kind of brushed on at the beginning of the video, but I'm going to go ahead and read this little section here. Uh, so verses 5 and 6. The statement found approval with the whole congregation, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith uh, and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Permanus, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. And they brought before, and and these they brought before the apostles. And after praying, they laid their hands on them. And that's how the Holy Spirit was transferred from the apostles to these men. Um, I also, they may have been present when the Holy Spirit came upon them. I'm not sure, but some time had gone by from chapter one to this point in chapter six, like some time, and they still hadn't left Jerusalem. Okay, Jesus had told them, you see what I mean? So then here, this is where they moved on. So let's go down to uh, verse 6 in, in Acts chapter 8 where we were. Uh, the crowds with one accord were giving attention to that, to what was said by Philip as they heard and saw the signs which he was performing. And uh, I referenced uh, John... John chapter uh, 4, verses 35 through 41. So I'll go ahead and go to that one. And then uh, I know there's another reference here written down uh, for uh, Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. So we'll get there too here in just a second. So John chapter 4, verses 35 through 31, uh, or 30, 41. So uh, these are the words of Jesus uh, here, so it says, do not say there are yet four months, uh, and then come the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields that they are white for the harvest. And this is where Jesus was sitting with the Samaritan woman at the well, talking about the Samaritans, okay, to the apostles. They had just come up to him and he was saying, behold, I say, to you lift up your eyes and, and there were people coming back to him from the city okay this is all part of the story 
but he's pointing at these people, Jesus says, as they come out to find out who this man is. He says, Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, that they are white for harvest. Okay, So he was telling the apostles here in the book of John that Samaria was ready for harvest because they believed in the same God. And Jacob was their father as well. And Jacob is Israel, if you follow what I'm saying. What had happened was it was all over racism. Okay, the hatred between, because Samaria had been, or because that area had been taken over, the Jews lived there, and they had been taken over, and they interbred with the people, uh, I think they were Samarians or Syrians, Samarians, uh, they had taken over again, and then they intermarried and whatever, you know, and, and uh, so they were people who were Jewish Samarians, but they still believed in the same God and still had a lot of the same traditions and they believed in the first five books of the bible the pentateuch they were still jewish per se but uh, they were not allowed to, to to participate and they hated them because of race basically so anyways uh, let's get on out of that already he who reaps is receiving wages and is gathering fruit for life eternal and that's what he was saying as those people were coming out already he who reaps i'm reaping okay so that he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this case, the saying is true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. From that city, many of the Samaritans believed in him. And because of the words of the woman who testified, he told me all the things that I have done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus... They were asking him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days, which is unheard of for a Jewish person to stay with Samaritans to begin with. Uh, but he was talking to them about him being the Messiah, okay? And he was trying to reconcile Jerusalem and Samaria because they're, you know, they're they're the same people, okay? And they were saying to the woman. It, oh, wait, and, and many more believed because of his word, uh, and that's Jesus' word, and that's in 41. But anyways, I'm not going to get in too far into this Samaritan message, but uh, Jesus, that's part of why he came. It's, it's back in the prophecy, was to unite Jerusalem and Samaria back together and also to save our souls, okay? But this prophecy right here had to happen. And then I'm going to take you to Matthew chapter 9. Verses 35 and 38. I'm not sure what these are right now, but we're going to find out real quick. Huh. Don't know why I referenced these. 35 through 38. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. Oh, it's because uh, um, they were simply doing what he had asked them to do through prayer. Uh, um in Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to go ahead and read this little section here, but it's uh, Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, which is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. And that takes us back here. You know, uh, many of them were like sheep without a shepherd. That's why he went to... That's why uh, when Philip got to Samaria, they were ready to hear the message, okay? Because Jesus had been there and Jesus had prepared the way. Now, Philip was doing the exact same thing that Jesus did when Jesus was gone because Jesus had given him the power through the Holy Spirit. Anyway, so um, then he said to uh, his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And then he says, therefore beseech the Lord of... The harvest to send out workers into the harvest. And Jesus is telling his disciples, his, his apostles actually, to pray for God to send workers, more um, ministers of God to uh, the Samaritans uh, and to the world. And so that's exactly what was going on here uh, by Philip. Uh, they commonly refer to Philip as Philip the Evangelist. And uh, one of the other stories that comes up in this here and i guess i'm just gonna go ahead and read it uh this story as well um 
this is a story about uh, an Ethiopian eunuch who is reading the Pentateuch, the five, first five books of the Bible. Or no, I think it's the whole thing because this is uh, the prophet Isaiah. Anyway, um, so he was reading the, the book, the Jewish, Jewish book. Uh, and uh, anyway, let's just go to it. So when they had solemnly testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they started back to Jerusalem and were preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. And this is just kind of a little further on after what we had just read. And uh, by an angel of the Lord, uh, but an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, get up and go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. So God told him to get up and go a different direction. And uh, this is a desert road. And make note of that. This is a desert road. So they're in the middle of the desert. Okay. So he got up and went. And there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. So he was a very important person who was able to take information back to Ethiopia. Okay. Um, who was in charge of all her treasure. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship. So he was a proselyte, a convert to Judaism. And, and so, um, and he was returning and sitting in his chariot and was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Philip, go up and join this chariot. So Philip's walking along down this road and all of a sudden this guy comes by and Philip is told, go, go see what's going on in there. So he goes over to the chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? So Philip automatically uh, recognized the words of the prophet Isaiah because he had been learning from Jesus and the other apostles, of course. And, and in the synagogues, you know, they still taught these things in the synagogues. You know, uh, it was some of the other things that they were correct about this part. They taught you the words. They just, the, the, the way that they used the words may not have always been correct, I guess, would be the way to say it. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, Well, how could I unless someone guides me? So he was, for whatever reason, unable to understand the, these words. And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of Scripture which he was reading was this. He was led as a sheep to slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he does not open his mouth. In humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who will relate his generation? For his life was removed from the earth. The eunuch answered Philip and said, Please tell me of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and he began from this scripture to preach Jesus to him because Jesus was the lamb that was led to slaughter. Jesus was silent all the way to the end. He didn't cuss them and yell at them or you know, see what I mean? Um, so he started to teach him of Jesus from this passage. Um, and it was the spirit of the Lord because we just heard that the spirit told him to go here and the spirit told him to speak to him. You see where I'm at? Um, as they went along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? And I wonder where in the desert they found water as they were going along. But miraculously, when he needed to be baptized, there was water in the desert. It doesn't say they came to an oasis, or they came to a, it just says there was water. See where I'm at? Okay. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And this is bracketed in my Bible. Uh, that verse is not in early manuscripts. It was added. So um, some of the newer manuscripts, and I'm talking about manuscripts from 2,000 years ago, not you know the ones we've been using for the past 500 years. Um. And he ordered the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch no longer saw him. 
but went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and he was, and as he passed through, he kept preaching the gospel to all the cities until he came to Caesarea. So the story goes, and this is the way that it's written, that Philip went down to the water with the eunuch, and they both went under together when he baptized him. And when the eunuch came up, Philip was gone. He disappeared. And he came to Azotus. So God plucked Philip out of that water and put him in Azotus so he could go to Caesarea. The reason is because later on, people are coming to Caesarea who stay at Philip's house. So God needed him there. Uh, but we'll find that out later on. So that's the reading that I had kind of prepared and all the, the uh, references and stuff um, that I had for that. I just wanted to get it all on video uh, since I had already pretty much prepared it. Um, thanks for listening and uh, um, God bless.